Hey, welcome to How to Play, brought to you by the Games Capital. Today we're looking at a brand new game called Concept. Now Concept has just been nominated for the 2014 Game of the Year, or the Spiel des Jahres, German Board Gaming Award. And we here at the Games Capital think that this would be a very worthy winner. It's a great game. It's actually a party game, and it's in the same family as a lot of other party style games, games that require you to describe either a word or a phrase to the other players and get them to guess what it is. So it, it's similar to games like Pictionary, where you have to draw the clue and get the uh, other players to guess what it is that you're drawing, or even games like Taboo, where you have a word that you've got to describe verbally to the other players, get them to guess. So it's in the same family as those, but Concept uses a completely different method of describing those words and phrases and we'll get to that in a moment. But first of all, let's have a look at what's in the box. First of all we have this game board that has a series of icons or images laid out on it which you use during the game to give clues to the other players to try and guess your word. As well as that there are these little reference sheets which give you some ideas as to what each of those particular images potentially could represent during the game, which might give you some ideas about giving out clues. There's a deck of cards which has the clues listed on them. There are three categories. Basically, you've got easy clues, medium, and then quite difficult. And each of those sections has three choices. Then, there are a series of little coloured markers some large markers and then a matching lot of coloured cubes and you use those together to give your clues. You'll see how that works in a, in a moment. And finally, a series of little tokens which are little light bulbs and they're used for scoring. So when a person guesses a clue correctly, they'll get one of those as a point. So that's the components. Let's now have a look at how this game actually works. Now, Concept is designed to be played in teams of two. So you split up into pairs, and each pair will then work together to create the clues for the other players. However, it's still one individually, so you'll be scoring your own points as you play the game. We'll see how that works in a moment. So for example, when it's your team's turn, you'll draw one of the cards, and you will have previously decided whether you're going to be choosing from the easy, medium or difficult section of the card. So you'll choose one of the three options in each of those sections and then you'll give your clues out. So for example, if I've chosen this card and we're doing the easy section, I've got a choice of either robot, starfish or soccer. So we'll have a little discussion as to which one of those is going to be the easiest for us to do. In this case, let's, for example, choose the word starfish. So we want to give that clue out. So first of all, you take the question mark icon or token, which is representative of the main concept that you're going to be discussing or giving the clue for. So in this instance, starfish is the clue. So the first concept, I guess, would be that we are describing an animal. So here on the board, we have, there's a spot which indicates an animal. So I would place the question mark there to tell the other players that the subject matter is an animal. Now we clearly need to give more clues than that. So we would take these matching green cubes to expand on that particular concept. So we might want to indicate that it's an animal that lives in the water. So over here we've got an icon for water. So we place one cube there to indicate that. Now the players now around the board will be hopefully figuring out that the animal that we're referring to is a sea creature, so potentially a fish. Now we need to narrow it down even further, don't we? So fortunately over here on this side of the board we have a whole heap of shapes and other things, but there is a star. So the obvious thing would be to place a third or second cube onto the star. Now that should be enough for the players to figure out animal, in the water and some reference to a star. So presumably the shape is a star, ah, it must be a starfish. Now when that happens, the player that has correctly identified the word 
gets one of these two light bulb tokens, so two points. And then each player on the team that has correctly given the clues out will receive one light bulb each. And then we move on to the next team. And that's basically how concept works. But what about some of the more difficult clues? Let's examine how you can go about giving those clues out. Okay, so let's say, for example, we're going to do one of the difficult uh, clues. So here on this card, we've got a few choices. We've got Esmeralda, it could be quite challenging. We've got the girl with the dragon tattoo, and then we've got an expression or a quote from Star Wars, Luke, I am your father. All reasonably difficult. Let's choose the middle one. Let's go with the girl with the dragon tattoo, and let's see how we can describe that to the other players. So I guess the main concept, or the first thing we want to get across is that it's a girl. So the, the first question mark icon will go onto a spot on the board which is indicative of female, so a little pink um, spot there, pink lady. So the first clue is that it's a female, so a girl or a woman. Then we want to give the clue of the fact that she's got a tattoo. All right, so we might use a secondary concept, and that's where these other question, uh, exclamation mark icons come into play. So how could we describe tattoo? Well, there's a spot on the board which, according to our reference sheet, um, indicates some sort of art or artwork. So we might place a token on there, because a tattoo is a type of art, but we need to narrow it down. So maybe we would take one of these secondary markers and perhaps we could place it on there's some icons down here which are representative of a uh, body. So we've got arm, leg, a body, a head. So we could put it maybe on the body or even on the arm or the leg. Let's put it on the body. So hopefully we're getting the message across that we're talking about body art. And if the players are clever enough, they'll realise that body art is probably a tattoo. So now we have a girl with a tattoo. We need to get some more information, don't we? So we'll take a third concept and we want to get across the idea of a dragon. So there's an icon up here that has actually two superheroes or a superhero and a, it's like a mermaid. What that, according to our chart, could be indicative of is something that's fictional or imaginary. So maybe we place the token there, so it's something imaginary. It's an imaginary animal, so we we'll take one of these yellow cubes, place it on the animal spot. So now we've got a girl or a lady with a tattoo, and hopefully they can figure out that the tattoo is of an imaginary animal. Someone might be clever enough to get it at that point, but maybe we need a little bit more, so perhaps we could take one final yellow cube and maybe we put it on the fire spot so an animal, something to do with fire, an imaginary animal, and hopefully players will figure out that we're talking about a dragon. And from those three concepts, girl, tattoo, dragon, somebody will figure out that it's a girl with a dragon tattoo. And so that's how you can use sub-concepts to get your message across. Now, as I mentioned before, the reference sheet is quite handy because it gives you an idea of what the various icons on the board could potentially represent, but you're not tied to what's on this sheet of paper. If you can think of a different concept that that particular image might be referring to, particularly in connection with something else, well then you can use it. There's no restriction. There's also a number of other clever ways that you can perhaps use the little cubes to indicate certain things. So for example, if I want to really emphasise something, for example, if I want to give the idea of something that is extremely happy, I've got a little smiley face icon, well, I could put one cube there and that, you know, signifies happy, but maybe I want to put a whole heap of cubes on there to give the impression that I'm talking about something that's really happy. You can do that uh, with other things obviously as well. Or you might use the cubes in another clever way. You might uh, stack them up and that might indicate something. You might place the cube on a specific part of the image to indicate something specific in that image. Basically anything goes. If you can think of it, 
and you, it will help get your message across, then you can do it. Uh, the sky's the limit really, only up to your creativity. The game ends when all of the double two point tokens have been handed out and at that point, whoever has the most points is the winner. In summary, players work in teams of two to try and get the other players to guess a word or phrase. To do this they must create concepts by placing markers on the images on the game board. By creating sub-concepts, players can hopefully convey complex ideas. Points are awarded for correctly guessing the word and for giving good clues. The player with the most points wins. So that's concept. Now I found this game to be extremely interesting to play. You really have to think outside the square, not only when you are giving the clues out, but also when you're receiving clues from other players. You've got to try and get into their head and figure out what they're trying to tell you by the clues that they're giving. Uh, yes, yeah, an extremely interesting game to play. So if you like that style of party game, where you've got to guess a clue or a word, then this certainly does it in, a, in a quite a different way, and I'm sure you would enjoy it. It'd be interesting to see whether it does, in fact, take out the Game of the Year award. We'll know in about a month. Anyway, thanks for watching and happy gaming.